Well, good evening, each one. We welcome you out to our online ministry of the Open Bible Baptist Church. We're so glad you can join in tonight. And I'm going to invite you to take our song books. We're going to turn to the hymn, Rock of Ages. It's 183, number 183, Rock of Ages. And we'll sing this before our, our, we study in the Word tonight. And uh, we'll sing it together here. 183, Rock of Ages. Amen. Let's bow together in prayer. Father, we thank you tonight for each one that's tuning in. We thank you, Lord, that you're here with us. We pray, Father, as we open your word, you'd bless it to us. We pray, Father, we'd be challenged and encouraged in these days. We know, Father, we're into a new year. And, Father, with a new year, we're going to face new challenges. We're going to have you know, new experiences. But then, Father, we're going to be reminded of so many blessings that we have as well, Lord, in thee. And so help us in the midst of these challenges that we face, that we would be reminded of just what blessings we have, Lord, and how you've saved us, how you're keeping us, how you love us, how you protect us, how you minister to us each and every day. We thank you for the Holy Spirit of God who lives in each one of us as Christians. We thank you, Lord, that the moment we ask Jesus Christ to come into our heart to be our Savior, that very moment, the Holy Spirit of God came and he indwelled us. And Father, we're sealed onto the day of redemption. And we thank you for the wonderful promises we have from your word. We pray, Father, now as we study that you would guide our attention to your word, that we would grow, and that we would be a thankful people. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm going to invite you to take your Bibles and turn with me, please, to 2 Timothy chapter 1. 2 Timothy chapter 1. And I am going to uh, read in the verse 12 verses. And reading in at verse 1 of 2 Timothy chapter 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, according to the promise of life which is in Christ Jesus. To Timothy, my dearly beloved son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father in Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God whom I serve from my forefathers with, a, with pure conscience, that without ceasing I have remembrance of thee in my prayers night and day, greatly desiring to see thee, being mindful of thy tears, that I may be filled with joy. When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which first dwelt in thy grandmother Lois and in thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded that in thee also. Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. For God hath not given us, given us the spirit of fear, but of power, and of love, and of a sound mind. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me his prisoner, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God, who hath saved us, and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which it was given in Christ Jesus before the world began, but is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who hath abolished death, and hath brought life and immortality to light through the gospel, whereunto I am appointed a preacher, and an apostle, and a teacher of the Gentiles. For the which cause I also suffer these things, nevertheless I am not ashamed. 
For I know whom I have believed, and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. We're studying this passage tonight, and I'm thinking of the word ashamed. We find the word ashamed many times in the scriptures. In a couple of instances, we find the word ashamed. It says in Psalm 31 and verse 1, In thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. Let me never be ashamed. Deliver me in thy righteousness. We know the Apostle Paul said in Romans chapter 1, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation, everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. In 2 Timothy 2.15, says this, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. First Peter chapter 4, it says, yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. And the Lord Jesus in the gospel of Luke chapter 9 said this, for whosoever shall be ashamed of me and of my words, of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed, when he shall come in his own glory and in his father's and of the holy angels. The word ashamed is found many times in the scriptures and one of the continual calls we find in the Bible is to be not ashamed. It says in verse number eight of our text, be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me his prisoner. In verse 12 he says, for the which things cause, for the which cause I also suffer these things, nevertheless I am not ashamed. And so what does it mean to be ashamed? We have all been ashamed perhaps at times in our lives for things that we have done, things we've said, thoughts we've had in our minds. You know, the devil would want every Christian tonight to be ashamed of two fundamental areas in our lives as a Christian. One of that one area is the testimony of the Lord, what the Lord has accomplished. The other is of the servants of the Lord, the servant of the Lord, those whom the Lord sees fit to minister truth to the hearers. And that's what Paul's speaking of here to Timothy. He says, Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner. I want us to be reminded of these two reasons why we are called to be not ashamed. Be not ashamed. And let's bow together in prayer. Father, we thank you again for your word. We pray, Lord, you'd speak to each heart. We pray, Father, for those individual needs that are represented tonight as we view online and, and meet together in this way. We pray, Father, thy spirit would work in a mighty way. We pray, Lord, that we'd be drawn closer to thee. We pray, Father, that your word would, which is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, we pray that it would pierce into our hearts and that, Father, you would cause us to change as a result. Father, help us to be yielded to thy will. Help us not to be ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Help us not to be ashamed of those whom you've called to serve and to preach the gospel. Help us to be faithful, Lord, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. He says, be not ashamed. And so I want to notice those two areas, the first of which uh, Paul speaks of not being ashamed of the testimony of our Lord. And he also says in verse number eight, not, nor of me as prisoner. And why could Timothy stand in an unashamed confidence in the Lord? We could ask that question. Well, we know what verse number seven taught us last time in relation to the Holy Spirit. He says, for God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. He says, be not thou therefore ashamed. So he's referencing what has already been spoken. And why are we not to be therefore ashamed? It's because we have been given the Holy Spirit of God, not one of fear, not one of timidity or cowardice, but one of power, the Holy Spirit of power, the Holy Spirit of love, the Holy Spirit of soundness of mind. And that's the kind of spiritual response that the Lord is looking for in each and every one of us tonight. He's looking for us to be, to to uh, uh, for the Holy Spirit of God to uh, not only and dwell us as a Christian, but to that we be filled with the Holy Spirit of God. And we're indwelt by the Spirit when we know Christ as Savior, but we're to be filled and, and led by the Holy Spirit as we yield ourselves to him. And so Timothy could stand for the Lord and for the Apostle Paul, nor of me his prisoner, he says. He could stand for the Lord and the Apostle Paul unashamedly, even if it meant persecution. And he says to him in the second part of verse number eight, 
but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. But be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. And certainly <coughs> Timothy needed the power of God in his life. as a, He was a teacher, Bible teacher, pastor, and, and leader. And he needed God's help and power if he was going to communicate God's word and his truth to others. God's word is, word is light, as life. And we know the devil is opposing that light. He's opposing that life. He is looking to uh, discredit the Lord. It's just discredit those whom the Lord is called to serve. But God gives tremendous power even in the midst of suffering. We know that many have suffered. The Lord Jesus suffered he, in the Garden of Gethsemane in great agony. He prayed in the garden, and we know that the angels came and strengthened him. We know the Apostle Paul prayed three times that that painful thorn in the flesh would be removed from him. But the Lord came and spoke to him and said, My grace is sufficient for thee. We know that Second Peter chapter 4 tells us that there are times in which the Christian is called to suffer. Second Peter chapter 4 or rather 1 Peter chapter 4, I'll get in the right place here. Notice what he says in verse number 12. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, then ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye, for the spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you. But on your part he is evil spoken of, but on, on their part he is evil spoken of, but on your part he is glorified. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, or as a thief, or as an evildoer, or as a busybody in other man's matters. Yet if any man suffers a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. Let him not be ashamed. And there are times as a Christian we suffer. And we know that uh, many believers have gone through countless sufferings. And whether that's physical sufferings. There are other types of persecution that Christians endure. But Paul reminds Timothy, do not be ashamed. There will come times of affliction. But be thou partaker of the affliction to the gospel according to the power of God. He's going to talk about the power of God now. He's going to remind them of why we're not to be ashamed of the testimony of the Lord. What's the testimony of the Lord? He says, who has saved us. He speaks of salvation. That we're born again by the Holy Spirit of God. We're be thou partaker according to the afflictions of the gospel. According to the power of God who has saved us. And called us with a holy calling. And they were called with a holy calling, and certainly the Lord is calling men and women and boys and girls all over the world today to be saved. And God's calling is a holy calling. God speaks to our hearts, and we're called to respond by faith and obedience. And salvation, we know, is found by grace through faith, and that's what it teaches us here. Not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace which was given, in us, given us in Christ Jesus before the world began, not according to our works. The Bible is very clear that we do not get into heaven someday based upon the things that we've done in this life. Heaven is found for those who have personally trusted Christ as their Savior by faith alone, inviting him into our hearts, Believing he died for our sins, was buried and rose again the third day. Ephesians chapter 2 tells us, For by grace are ye saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, not of works, lest any man should boast. Not of works, lest any man should boast. Notice what Titus tells us. 3 and verse 5, Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior. So when we think of the, the, not be the call to be not ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, what's his testimony? He has come down. He has saved us. He has called us. He has saved us by his grace, not by our works. He has a, he's had a plan of salvation before the world was. And we're thankful that the gospel goes out into the whole world today that whosoever would call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. 
And we trust each one that's tuning in tonight. If you've trusted Christ as your Savior, what a wonderful thing. What a wonderful hope we have. If you've never invited Jesus to be your Savior, you can do that tonight. And you can be saved. You can have your sins forgiven. You can be sure of heaven. You can have tremendous confidence and hope as we move forward in these days. And so, notice it tells us in verse number 10. But is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ. So he's talking about the Lord Jesus. And what is he talking about him? He says, who hath abolished death and hath brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. The Lord Jesus has abolished death. What a, what a phrase that is. The Lord Jesus is the destroyer of death. It's all because he died for our sins. He was buried and on the third day he rose again from the grave. Look at what 1 Corinthians chapter 15 tells us. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse number 55 tells us this. So when this corruptible shall have put on, verse 54, so when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Death is swallowed up in victory. Lord Jesus gives us the victory. And he says, He hath brought life in immortality to life, to light through the gospel. He has abolished death, and we have life in him. We have light in him, and it's all through the gospel. And we have eternal life, and one day we're going to have an immortal body, one that will not break down, one that will not decay. And what a testimony the Lord Jesus has tonight. And there, there's a call to be unashamed. Be thou therefore unashamed of the testimony of our Lord. Look at what he's accomplished. May it be that we would not be ashamed of the one who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. May it be that we would not be ashamed of the one who's coming one glorious day and he's going to call us home. That's what the Bible teaches and that's the tremendous hope we have. We can hold God to his word. He always keeps his promises and he is faithful and true. But Paul calls Timothy not to be ashamed only of the testimony of our Lord, but notice what he says. In verse 8, he says, Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me as prisoner. The Apostle Paul was enchained. He was imprisoned. He had been imprisoned many times for the cause of the gospel. In fact, in his missionary journeys, he experienced many times of, of pain and trial. In fact, he was stoned and left for dead in one place, and the, the Lord uh, gave him strength to get up and keep moving. The power of God was upon him. The gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ was greater than any suffering that he could endure, and so he journeyed on. He was faithful, and that's why he comes to the end of his life in 2 Timothy here, and in chapter 4 he says, I am now ready to be offered in the time of my departures at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. And so the apostle Paul was faithful. He was faithful in, uh, right to the end of his life. He said, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. And so we know the Apostle Paul was in prison many times. And it was even in those times of prison that the Lord used him to record his word so that we can have it before us even tonight. And he says, I'm not ashamed. And in the testimony of the Apostle Paul, we could find that he is confident in the Lord. And he and notice this is what he says in verse, verse 11 and 12. Wherefore, I am an appointed a preacher and an apostle and a teacher of the Gentiles, for the which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. When we think of someone who was confident in the Lord, someone who was faithful to the Lord, someone who trusted in the promises of the word of God, it was the Apostle Paul, and it can be you and I tonight. And that's... This verse has been a tremendous comfort to Christians, even that hymn, I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. 
And that hymn and that verse has been a tremendous comfort to Christians over the years. I trust that you're like the Apostle Paul. I trust that you can say, I am not ashamed. I know whom, for I know whom I have believed. You know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. We know Christ as we move forward in this life and in this journey. And we know what he has. In, he has tremendous things in store for us, uh, both here, so many blessings, but then up yonder for one day he's going to call us home. And how encouraging it is to see Christians who are resolved to follow the Lord in the most difficult of times and say, I'm not going to be ashamed of the Lord. I'm not going to be ashamed of his word. I'm not going to be ashamed of those who teach and preach his word. I remember we know so many in our lives who have been an influence to us over the years and have been an encouragement. And one individual that will stand out in my life as a tremendous encouragement was that of Pastor Gardner. And we know he went home to be with the Lord just a few weeks ago. And many in our congregation had the opportunity to learn under his ministry. And I had the opportunity to learn as a student over at the Bible school. And he was there while I was there for the four years. And uh, he was teaching. There was a man who loved the Lord. There was a man who was unashamed of the gospel of Christ. Uh, a man who was uh, um, faithful. And we're just thankful that he, he is an example for us. And we're to be an example for others. But why, why could he be an example to us? Because he followed the Lord Jesus Christ. How can we be an example to others when we follow the Lord Jesus Christ? For I know whom I have believed. And when that rings true in each one of our lives, it will be evident in the way that we live. And the Lord wants to help us to live a way that's honoring and pleasing to him. And that's what the Apostle Paul sought to do. And that's what we ought to seek to do. Certainly the devil would want for each one of us to be ashamed. To be ashamed of the Lord. To be ashamed of those who are servants of his. But may we not be. May we be faithful. May we be uh, may we have surrendered hearts to him. And I trust each one tonight as we just very briefly look over this passage. We say in verse 8, Paul says, Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me as prisoner, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. I wonder what the Lord is calling us to tonight, how we might be used of him for his glory. What gifts has he given us to be to minister uh, in what areas has he called us to serve? In what ways can we be a testimony and a witness and a light and salt in the areas that, we're, that we live? And so I trust that um, through these few thoughts tonight that the Lord would encourage our hearts and that we would stand and say, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. I'm not ashamed of the testimony of my Lord. That we would be as the psalmist David who said, In thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. Let me never be ashamed. Deliver me in thy righteousness. And the Lord willing, we'll come back to study more in the in Second Timothy chapter 1, Lord willing, next week. And uh, if you have uh, those prayer requests that you have before you, and, and uh, we can bring them before the Lord here as we close our evening. And I'm so glad that we could share this time together in the word of God. Father, we thank you for this time in your word. We thank you, Lord, for the encouragement to our hearts. We pray, Father, that you'd help us. We pray, Father, that we'd be faithful. We pray, Father, that um, as we think of those that are going through times of sickness and suffering, we know there's some that have recovered from surgery. There's some that are very, very sick with cancer that we've been praying for. There's some that have appointments related to cancer that we've been praying for, Lord. We know that there are some that are going through times of decision, and, and then there are many things upon our hearts, Lord, that only you know. And so, Father, we pray that as we lift these requests up to thee, Lord, that you would speak to each heart. We pray for the gospel as it goes around the world, that many would be saved. We pray for missionaries serving in different parts of the world, Lord, that you would encourage them and help them. We pray, Lord, as there's continued rise in the cases of the COVID and, and so many restrictions in many places. We pray you give grace and help, that you give wisdom to those that make decisions over us. And Lord, we pray that um, we would just be faithful to thee. We pray, Father, now that you part us with thy blessing. We thank you for the privilege it's been to be together tonight. 
We pray, Lord, that you would continue to work in our hearts until we have the privilege of meeting together on the Lord's Day. For it's in Jesus' name we pray and we ask. Amen. I want to thank you for joining me tonight and uh, trust the Lord will bless you and take good care each one.